and welcome back to another episode of Harlequin Books and Cooks. Each episode, I teach a popular romance novelist a new recipe that I personally love while we talk about their careers and their latest novels. And today, we have none other than New York Times, USA Today best-selling author, Macy Yates. And together, we're gonna whip up my famous and delicious cowboy collar. You don't wanna miss it, stick around. Well, I am so excited to have Macy Yates is here with us today, and I am just thrilled to have her going to cook up some delicious desserts today. Macy, how are you? I'm great. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me and for um, teaching me to make your cobbler. Now, I don't know about you, but I love me some desserts and my sweet tooth is out of this world. Tell me you're the same. Absolutely the same. I, it's, dinner's not done if there's no dessert. I love sweets. Hey, I hear that. Well, good to know, because as you know, we are making my famous cowboy cobbler. And for those that are at home, click the link below for the full recipe and you can follow as well. Macy, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. Okay, Macy, we are ready. We have our sliced apples. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really easy. All we're doing now is going to, we're going to add majority of our ingredients into our apple slices. Are you ready? Do you have any questions for me before we get started? I think I'm ready. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and add in our brown sugar. Perfect. And then we're gonna go ahead and add in our apple juice. So let's go ahead and add in our vanilla, our cinnamon, our nutmeg. So let's go ahead and add your lemon zest and our white sugar. So we can go ahead and add in our butter. So we want, we're going to go ahead and just mix in our apples and all of the rest of our ingredients that we just added, okay? All right. And so Macy, I hear you like to do a lot of baking at home yourself. Is that right? I do. I like to bake. Really? So now you know you, you got to add, let me know what type of uh, favorite uh, desserts you like to cook for your family. So I really, really, um, I've been doing a lot of yeast breads. Um, I've been really enjoying kind of, I love desserts. And so when I do dessert, I really love cake. Um, but when I do just kind of daily, everyday baking, what I really like to do is to make a bread to go with dinner. I really love to make dinner rolls and I love to make, Nan is one of my favorite things to make. Um, and we've been making some of our own tortillas. I guess that's kind of not baking because you do those on a grill top, but um, still that's really what I like to do. And as you can see, I like to get my hands in my baking. So I'm just going ahead and doing it with my hands. <laughs> And once we do this, um, Macy, we're gonna go ahead and heat these apples up just to soften them a little bit before we place them in the oven with the cobbler. So, Macy, tell me a little bit about your family. Is there a husband? Are there kids? Tell me a little bit about that. Yes, so um, I live in Oregon with my husband of, gosh, it's almost 16 years, and our three kids. So we have a 14-year-old, a 13-year-old, and an 11-year-old, and um, the house is full, and uh, they love to eat, so it works out that I like to cook for them, because I feel like with three kids that age, they're basically eating 24 hours a day. So Macy, let me check on you again. How is your mixture doing? Are, you, are we ready to move on? Yep. Awesome. All right, Macy, let's get this mixture into this pot to get this apple cobbler going. You ready? I'm ready. All right, let's get started. What we're gonna do is gently pour in our mixture into our pot. And we need to, to simmer on a medium heat on top of the stove. 
for about 10 to 15 minutes. Now, what we're waiting for is for the apples to begin to boil. You have been a wonderful champion in the, in the romance genre. Has this always been the type of writing you've been drawn to? Um, I would say that I've always gravitated toward writing what I was reading at the time. And so when I was a kid, of course, I was writing adventure stories. I know, um, you know, when you're in school, I think Hatchet's been required reading for a long time. And that was, of course, about um, a boy who got in a plane crash and had to survive. So then I would write a story about a girl who got in a plane crash. And then I would always add like a cute boy that she would need to um, maybe uh, survive with and also maybe kiss. I didn't realize that I was always writing romance and it wasn't until I was 21 that I picked up my first real romance novel and read it and went, oh, this is exactly what I always wanted. Like everything that I loved to read and everything that I wanted to write always had a little bit of romance and it was never enough. And I didn't realize there was a whole genre out there of like only the good stuff. Um, <laughs> and once I discovered that, that was it for me. Wow. Well, it seems like you are so passionate about this genre, writing about romance stories. Can you tell me why do you think that it's important for romance books to be just as mainstream as any other genre of books that's out there now? I think it's such an interesting thing that as a culture, we undervalue happiness and hope when that is what we all want. I think that's the thing that unites people more than anything else. We all want love. We all want to believe that no matter what, our lives can turn out happy and hopeful and that we're deserving of love. And that's what romance novels are all about. And that's one reason that I'm so passionate about it. It's, it's so interesting to me that people will say things like, oh, but you know, a happy ending is, is predictable. And it's like, I think, Everybody knows how to, anybody can write a character and take them to a very dark place and then leave them down there. But I think it takes real skill to take a character and put them in a dark place and write how they come back from that. And I think that's what romance is. That's what it's about. It's how you come back from the dark place. And I think that's what we need more of in the world. We need more stories about people coming back and stepping into the light and stepping into hope and stepping into love. And, and that's why I think, you know, romance should be mainstream. There's nothing predictable or, um, pat or easy or, um, you know, fluffy about choosing joy, even in a world that can be difficult. So I am so excited about everything that you just said, especially about the love part. So my first non-romance um, just released last year and um, it still has romance in it because I'm me and that is something that's important to me. So even though the focus of my women's fiction stories is a little more on the family dynamic, um, they still end hopefully and there are still elements of romance and that book was called Secrets from a Happy Marriage. And then um, I have another one coming out with Harlequin as well in May called Confessions from the Quilting Circle. So they're like my romances, but the the lens is just a little bit wider um, to kind of include more about family because that's another thing that is really important to me and another thing that I really love to write about. Um, I'm very close to my family. My parents live next door, um, which my husband's actually cool with. Um, <laughs> they're good in-laws. Um, so yeah, family is another thing that is super important to me. Okay, Macy, so let's go ahead and check on this apple mixture. It looks like mines have come to a rolling boil. How's yours doing over there? Mine is definitely bubbly. There's a lot of apple in here. I think my apples were really big. So it's rolling underneath the apples. <laughs> we are ready to add our last two ingredients. So let's go ahead and add in our last stick of butter. And we're gonna go ahead and add in the cornstarch. And the cornstarch is basically going to thicken up our apple mixture. All right, Macy, let's go ahead and get ready to transfer our apple mixture over in our pan. So how about you go ahead and get your dough ready? Okay, so we have our prepared pan. So I normally just use a big spoon. And what I'm going to do is just spoon, spoon some of the mixture and pour it over into my pan. It smells so good. It does, it smells delightful, I'm telling you. I made a huge mess and um, I'm tasting things in advance. So I'm just going to go ahead and break all the rules. 
<laughs> break up. <Okay. laughs> the last thing to do is we're going to place our um, crust on top, and then we're going to put a little egg wash to make it shine and get that golden brown crust on top, and we'll be ready to put this in the oven. I love these, but they're kind of thin. So I just want to make sure we don't tear them like I'm about to do. So how are you doing with your top crust over there? I'm good. I've got it on, and hopefully we won't have um, juice explosions. I think I've got it secured to the top. You have your egg and your um, splash of water, and we're just going to spread it on the sides, on top here. So how are you doing? Did you get yours covered yet? Yes, I think that it's. I think it's good, and I think I've got like no like pools of egg or anything like that. I think I did what you uh, what you're describing. Well, awesome, because guess what? It's time to put it in the oven. Yay! All right, Macy, we have our cowboy cobbler in the oven, and I have to confess to you, I call this the cowboy cobbler because it seems and it fits so well with your latest desire novel, A Rancher's Wager. Let's talk about it. Tell me a little bit about it. I just wanted to write something really fun, really fantasy, really escapist. And so the idea for that book um, came about because I thought it would be so much fun to write a book where the heroine wins the hero in a poker game. Um, but of course, because he is um, kind of an alpha cowboy hero, he knew that she was going to win that poker hand and he has plans of his own. So they basically place a bet at this charity uh, poker game and if she wins, then he has to be the ranch hand on her ranch for 30 days. But that's actually what he wants because he's trying to convince her that being a rancher is not for her and that she actually wants to sell the land to him. So that's kind of the jumping off point. They're also part of, um, it's part of an ongoing series called Gold Valley Vineyards. Um, the two families are rival winery families. The heroine Cricket is a little bit um, unorthodox. She's kind of a tomboy. She doesn't fit in with her family. And the hero um, Jackson is um, a big time rancher. And so that's what she wants to learn from him. She wants to get away from her kind of very fancy winery family and she wants to um, get into ranching. And that is sort of the jumping off point for the book and where the sparks start to fly. What is the inspiration for cowboys? What does it all come from? Um, for me, I think it's a lot of it is that it's a great setting. Um, it's a great theme for where I live. I love to write books set in Oregon, and I know that unlike Texas or Wyoming or Montana, it's not necessarily the first place you think of when you think of cowboys, but we have a lot of ranch land in Oregon. We have a lot of cowboys. And actually, um, there was a news story a couple of years ago that made um, national news, and it may have even made international news, about a cowboy who lassoed um, a, a burglar, a robber, in a Walmart parking lot and held him there until the police arrived. Um, and that was actually here where I live. And I ended up getting to meet him at a baseball game where he was throwing like the opening pitch, which I feel like is like peak small town. Um, so yeah, we have cowboys here. We have um, robber stopping cowboys who are there with their horses lassoing bad guys in Walmart parking lots. So, I mean, it's a great setting that lends itself to, to cowboys. That's amazing. I would not have expected it <laughs> at all. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I really would have, and I'm so glad you told me that. Now, so I have to ask you this question then. Is your husband a cowboy? <laughs> Um, he is not. Um, he's a musician, um, but he can definitely sing a mean country tune. So I feel like that almost counts. Um, we rode horses together one time, um, but I'm allergic to horses and hay and dust, which is why um, maybe why western is such a great fantasy for me because while i love that kind of thing it is immediately like not a happy situation for me so it's probably for the best that i'm not married to like a real actual cowboy or i would sneeze a lot so macy you have written over like a hundred books in this decade that's absolutely unbelievable 
like I'm still so excited that I get to do this for my job and I'm still blown away that I get to wake up and make up stories every day. And of course, some days I don't want to do it because it's a job. And so you can always feel that way. But I think, you know, it's a passion and it's a dream job. And so for me, it's like, I'm just having fun. That's really kind of, um, for me, what, what I focus on. And then, yeah, I look up and it's been a hundred books and it's, it blows my mind. And let me tell you, you're doing a gigantic thing for other people, especially for me that love to read romance novels. And you know what? I think it's time for my cobbler to come out the oven now. So I'm going to check on mine and make sure we're going to let this thing cool off. And soon, guess what? I, do we get to eat it? Do I finally get to eat? <laughs> yes, ma'am. The best part and the timer just went off. So let me go ahead Ooh. and take the cobbler out. Woo! cobblers look so delicious. Look at yours. It's beautiful and golden brown and I'm sitting up here staring at mine. Thank you so much for walking me through it because without your guidance I would not have this amazing cobbler here and I am so so excited about it. And I have to say that I know you're so busy writing and and coming out with so many books like almost back to back. Do you have any time to wind down any hobbies anything that you enjoy doing? I really love to knit. I'm a huge knitter. I post a lot of my knitting stuff on Instagram because it is so much fun for me. Um, I learned how to do it about a year and a half ago. Um, one of my, uh, a couple of my fellow Harlequin writers, um, Jackie Ashenden and Caitlin Cruz are also big knitters and we have a little like knitting text and we do um, share a lot of things with each other and kind of encourage each other and share patterns and um, just talk a lot about yarn. Um, we're very into that. And um, I also um, run a book club, a romance book club with um, Caitlin Cruz. And um, that's really, really fun. We um, read awesome books and talk about them. We've been meeting on Zoom um, this whole time. And um, another fellow Harlequin writer who just had her debut Harlequin Presents, Marcella Bell, is part of that book club as well. And um, yeah, so we've got just lots of, I, I do lots of stuff. <laughs> So Macy, guess what? What? It's time. Let's dig in. We can cut this up, serve it on the plate with some ice cream. Let's do it. All right. All right, Macy. We got our cobbler. My favorite ice cream. Now, this is our um, hometown ice cream, Blue Bell ice cream, vanilla ice cream. It's my favorite. What about you? What you got over there going? I've got my Umpqua vanilla ice cream, which is um, a big Oregon brand. Um, it originates just uh, an hour and a half or so north of me, and um, it is my favorite dairy, any kind of dairy. I love the ice cream, the milk, all of it. You ready? I'm ready. I'm more than ready. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. Mm, 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 mm. Oh my God. Mm. So Macy, tell us what you got going on next. What's coming up? So I have um, a book called A Good Old Fashioned Cowboy and I wrote that with my friends. Caitlin Cruz, Jackie Ashenden, and Nicole Helm, and I'm very excited for that book to come out. And I also have um, the mass market release of Secrets from a Happy Marriage, which is the women's fiction, my very first women's fiction that came out last year. That is great to hear. Well, Macy, it has been truly an honor to have you here with me. I thank you again so much for coming. Um, thank you so much for having me and for teaching me to make this wonderful cobbler. And it's been so nice to chat with you. And I'm so excited that I now have an entire cobbler to eat. <laughs> That's the deal. And you have to come back and visit so we can 
probably work on something else or probably fix up something else a little bit more not as sinful <laughs> i'm game for anything i'm down for that we'll have to do that for sure I'd like to thank our guest, Macy Yates, for joining me today and doing an absolute amazing job with her cobbler. Make sure you check out her latest novel, which is The Rancher's Wager, which is available everywhere now. Also, you want to check out another goodie, which is called A Good Old Fashioned Cowboy, which is a collection of stories by Macy and a few of her romance writing friends, which is available right now as well. For you at home for this recipe and so much more, visit Harlequin Books and Cooks and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time.